All right, what I got here today, we got a couple chains I need to file real quick, so <clears throat> thought it'd be a good time to show a couple differences on different kinds of chain and uh, what you can file with as far as guides go. So this chain right here, this is a steel chain. Can't really read it, it's got too much sap built up on it. You can kind of see it on this tooth right here. kind of see where it says steel on it but it's a steel chain 50 gauge 3 8 pitch round top chain or semi chisel has the rounded rounded radius on the tooth see a little better there if it will focus there we are has the rounded radius on the corner so Around here where I'm at, everybody usually calls those round top chains. Even though the top is flat, the side is round. That's just what they call it. So that's what I'm gonna start with filing and then also have a flat top or a chisel chain I'll file as well. So the two different guides that I'm gonna be messing with, let's see if I can get that just a little bit closer. Get it on that tooth right there. So the two guides that I'm going to be looking at is this Husky Roller Guide. These are pretty easy to tell what chain they're for. The blue ones are for the 3 8 Silver is for 325. And I'm also going to be using this. <clears throat> this is the steel filing guide that's been around for for ages. So we'll start with the roller guide and then do the do the steel. So one of the nice things about this guide here is you can use different size files. So if you've got <clears throat> if you've got softer wood and you would like more side plate angle, you can put a smaller file in it and make that chain a little bit more aggressive. So how this works, you set your guide in between these rivets there, and then your file just sits in there like so. And the way this guide is made, it's made to be uh, used at 25 degrees. So this would be 30, and that's 25. And if you try to go 30 degrees or for milling chain, 10 degrees, then you will wear those rollers out. And also you can see it kind of pushes the file the wrong way. It pushes the file around in it. So it's designed to be used at 25 degrees and that's where you need to use it. So that's kind of a disadvantage, I suppose, of this guide here. So I have a 1364 file. And the reason I'm running that file is the steel chain. The profile of the teeth is shorter so to get the side plate angle I want, I need a smaller file than the 730 seconds. So, put your file in there and make both rollers roll, just like that. So it's really easy to use. The thing I really like about this guide is that you can see the entire tooth where on the other guide it's covered up and we'll see that in a few minutes. So let's go on this fresh tooth right here. Get that down on there good. And then <clears throat> I'm going to do probably just one or two strokes on this tooth and then I'll get the camera under there so you can see exactly what it filed off. Cause this chain, it's been, it's cut a fair amount of wood since the last filing. So it's, it's definitely due. So you'll be able to see the difference pretty easy. One stroke and then we'll take this guide off and see if we can <clears throat> get down under it make sure that I'm looking at the right tooth there we are so you can see right here that before it was filed flatter at more of a flatter angle than 25 degrees so 
the file's trying to catch up and get it to the 25. And you can also see that it's only hitting the top. It's not hitting down underneath, which uh, I'll do another stroke and take a look at it again because it's still, it still can't hit the side plate at this point anyway but I believe it's gonna be a little bit high in the tooth, so. Let's see. Looking at that tooth there. So we'll place our guide back on it. We'll go ahead and do two more. That way we can for sure see what we're looking at that tooth there okay so now you can see that it's it's still mainly just on the top so it's not going to put very much side plate angle on it's going to be a fairly non-aggressive chain when i'm done filing with that guide so if i've got it on a bigger saw it probably won't be enough chain for the power head and it's on a pretty big saw so it's not going to be enough chain for it. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick this steel guide up and we'll start working on the next tooth. So this one here, um, you know, on this roller guide, it sets the depth of the file off of the chassis of the chain. Whereas this guide sets the depth of the file off of the drag and the tooth itself. So this guide is a little more versatile as far as which chain you can run it on and the profiles of the teeth and stuff like that. You're gonna be able to, to have the exact same result no matter what brand or style of chain that you're running. Where that Husky Roller Guide, it's going to matter what brand and uh, style of chain and all that, it's gonna matter on uh, what side plate angle you've got. So that's a benefit to this guide here, the steel guide. Um, and obviously, as you can already see, a big disadvantage is you can only see the very edge of the tooth, the very front edge. So you're, you can't really see, see the rest of the tooth as good, and that's one thing I don't really like about it. And the reference marks on this are at 30 degrees, and Personally, I like the 25 degrees. The wood that I cut most of the time prefers the 25 degree angle. So just back that off about five degrees. And that's another nice thing about this is you can change the angle however you want it. So you do that. Now, let's take a look at what we got here. So we're looking at that tooth that focus in so see here it's hitting the entire inside of the tooth from down in the gullet all the way to the top so it's going to be a little bit more aggressive of a chain and with the saw that it's on it'll more than likely do quite a bit better so we'll continue to use that guide so that's kind of a nice thing about having a couple different guides to choose from is you can pick and choose which one is going to do best for your situation and the chain that you're running and even the saw that it's on. So the more, the more you're able to do, the more versatile you're going to be and you're going to be able to more than likely do a better job. So we'll do a few more teeth here. And whenever you're filing, there's several different ways you can do it, it, and there's a lot of technique in filing. Filing really is an art. So whenever you're filing, a lot of guys will do this and kind of just let off of the pressure that you're putting on the tooth as you file to bring the file back. Files only cut one way. So you file, cutting material, and then on that one, you're just dragging it back. And there's nothing wrong with that. Bringing it back and letting it slide against the tooth. You can hear a slight chatter like that. Um, 
So you can do it like that, or you can bring the file all the way out and place it back in. That's a little slower, but it is a little bit easier on your file. Like I said, dragging it back like this doesn't really hurt your file that much, but it does take just a very, very slight amount of life off. So, that's taking it completely out of the tooth. And then, that's just kind of sliding the guide back towards your drag. And then placing it back inside the tooth. So, filling with the side plate, it's nice and sharp feeling. And the top plate doesn't do near as hard of work as the side plate, but... It's kind of fun just to see how sharp it is. So another advantage to this guide here, the steel guide, is it's fast. As you can see, you can do several teeth pretty quick. Whereas with this guide, after you file this tooth, then you have to move the guide and start all over. So this guide is a lot slower. So what my preference is on that, if I'm running steel chain because of the difference of the height of the teeth and how the uh, gauges are set up, I prefer to use this on steel chain and I prefer to use this on Oregon chain. These do, these really do a good job and the fact that you can see the tooth as you're filing, I think is really a really nice thing about that guide there. Let's see where I'm at so I don't get lost. That's pretty good. So that's a round top chain there. So what I'm gonna do now, I've got another saw sitting here Get that one out of the way. So now I'm going to set this one up. So this saw here has a chisel chain or a flat top. And you can see the corners of the teeth have a right angle on them. They come to a point over here and a flat side plate on the outside. fixed. So on this one here, if you're using a guide, it's pretty well the same sequence and the same um, technique, but it's going to look just a little bit different just because it is different styles of teeth. So on this one, you can see the file still riding pretty high in that tooth. And whenever you're round filing, it's hard to tell your angles without um, without some uh, machinist tools or at least a protractor and a, a flashlight and a clean wall. So, but you can still see, you can just kind of tell and, and feel how much of the file is sticking up above the top plate of the tooth. And that feels like it's a little bit too high. So I'm not even gonna use this uh, guide on this chain but you can see that it's still a little bit too high and you can see how it fits on there. So, and again, these are made 30 degrees. I want 25. And it is a good idea to count the strokes on the, the right hand and the left hand cutter teeth. That way you are putting the same amount of strokes on each side or at least trying to take the same amount of metal off. And everybody has a strong side. This, uh, the right hand cutters are my weak side. So I typically give those three strokes for just a touch up. So one, two, three. Let's go ahead and look under that tooth. Piece of 
So you can see it hit the entire inside of the tooth. And I believe that's just a little piece of a filing on there. But until I got dirt on the edge, you couldn't see the edge of the tooth. If you can see the edge of the tooth, after I do that, get a little dirt on it, you can, the edge of the tooth is more defined. You can kind of see it. And that's one way to tell if it's dull or not. If you can see the edge, like a pocket knife, if you can see the edge, then it's dull. But let's go ahead and roll this forward. Like this tooth here, this is a dull tooth. And you can see the edge, it's shiny, shiny up on the edge. It's a little harder to see in the camera, but looking at it in real life, I can very clearly see that it is dull. And this one here, this tooth here sticks out a little bit more. You can kind of see that edge a little bit. So it is dull. So that's just a couple guides and how they work and just kind of a few advantages, disadvantages and such about each one. But those are the main two ones that I use and there's a lot of different different guides out there that you can use and things like that. But those are the main two, like I said, that I, I use most of the time. And, and typically I just use those on the, on the semi-chisel chain uh, because I square grind all of my um, regular cutting chain for cutting down timber. And then for uh, bucking up, cutting dirty, uh, dirty logs after they're drug into the landing, stuff like that, and uh, firewood and such. I'll use the semi-chisel and round file that. So, thanks for watching, guys.